Hi everybody, welcome to Letters from Jen. Today I'm going to be speaking to you about taking that first step into the victory that you are believing for. Let's go into the Word of God together right now. yourself facing a task or a challenge that just seems impossible to conquer. Now I know that I faced some mountains in the past that really had me stumped. Now it's not that I wasn't up to the hard work or the effort required to get on top of things. My dedication was never in question. The trouble was that I had no idea where to begin or what to do to actually see the circumstances change. Now if you find yourself in the same predicament now, or sometime in the future. I pray that this letter will be an encouragement and provide you with that much needed light at the end of the tunnel even before you begin walking in victory. Now one morning not too long ago I asked the Lord to give me a very clear word that I could build my faith on and use to pray into a rather hopeless looking situation that I was facing. Now since I already knew what outcome I wanted, what I really needed was the first step to navigate my way towards it. Now what I mean by that is if we know that our physical healing, our financial freedom, our seeing a loved one saved or even having our business or ministry succeed is the outcome that we believe in for, what we need is that first step that will bring us closer to that outcome becoming our reality. So what would that first step look like? Well, that step comes in the form of a word from the Lord that resonates with our spirits and gives us the confidence and the direction that we need to move forward in. Now that's what I was looking for and it's what I want to share with you today because I really believe that it may be just the word that you need to hear. I pray that it comes alive in your heart and it gives you the jump start you need to walk in the very thing that you are believing for. Now this is the word that the Lord led me to. Proverbs 16, 3. Roll your works upon the Lord, commit and trust them wholly to Him, and He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to His will, and so shall your plans be established and succeed. Now sometimes the task ahead of us seems so overwhelming and complicated that we simply can't see the wood for the trees. So what we really need is a different perspective, one where we can see things clearly from God's point of view. Now in Proverbs 16 verse 3 that I just spoke to you about, it says that the Lord will cause our thoughts to line up with His will when we commit and trust our works to Him. Now did you notice that the word says He will cause our thoughts to be, in this, to be the same as His own? I'm going to say that again. He will cause our thoughts to be the same as His own. Now, can you imagine the advantage that we'll have in any situation when God's thoughts govern our decisions? We wouldn't be bogged down with our own negative, limited thoughts. Wouldn't you agree that having the God who knows all, sees all, is our guide through every challenge? It's an extremely appealing advantage. Nothing takes him by surprise. Every solution to every problem is already in him. Now that is the first step that we need. We need our thoughts to be God's thoughts, to get his perspective if we're going to see the problem solved. So now that we know what that first step looks like, it is a specific word from the Lord, let's see how it happens that we can have our thoughts align with His. The Bible tells us exactly how it happens. It says that we must commit our ways and works to the Lord. This means we have to submit our motives and our agendas to Him before we act. 
And when we do this, the Holy Spirit actually has the freedom to influence our thoughts and to take on His agenda. This gives us a very clear direction to follow. It actually reminds me of Psalm 97 11 that says, Light is sown for the uncompromisingly righteous, and it's strewn along their pathway, and joy for the upright in heart. The irrepressible joy, which comes from consciousness of His favor and protection. Now the light that the scripture actually speaks about is God's clear direction and wisdom that is revealed to us when we commit our ways to Him. So you see, along with the direction comes His supernatural insight and wisdom to carry that vision through. Now since it's birthed and empowered by His Spirit, the next part of the promise in Proverbs 16 verse 3 comes into play, where our work will be established and succeed into something that is marked with eternal significance. Now this is really remarkable. How do we do this? Well, in order to commit and trust our works to the Lord, prayer is required. In Ephesians 6, 18, it says, Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. Now, in the original Greek translation of the scripture, the word prayer here is a word I can't pronounce. But according to the Greek scholar Rick Renner's notes on that word, it conveys the idea of an intimate face-to-face relationship with God. This is where we surrender and consecrate our own thoughts in exchange for His thoughts and perspective. The moment we do this, we find another exchange automatically takes place. Our worry and confusion is replaced by His peace and His joy. Hopelessness is replaced with hope and our faith is stirred up. Now as we draw near to the Lord in an intimate face-to-face encounter, we can expect this exchange to take place. He will give you his point of view and clear instruction willingly without finding fault with you. I love that. Do you remember what James 1 verse 5 actually says? It says, if any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproach or fault finding and it will be given him. Love that. So wrapped up in this word prayer, we find the purposeful attitude of thanksgiving. Even before we receive practical wisdom from the Lord and clear direction, or even see His hand move on our behalf, we are to thank Him in advance for it. That means we are to joyfully expect that this is exactly what He will do when we come to Him in prayer. So before you even attempt to take on any task that lies ahead of you, take this first step of victory. Go to the Lord in prayer. Approach Him joyfully with a thankful attitude, fully expecting an exchange to take place. Draw near to Him in an intimate face-to-face encounter, completely surrendering yourself to Him. And then thank Him for pouring His wisdom into you and revealing His perspective to your heart and your mind. As you open your heart to Him, He will give you something to hold on to. It may be a specific instruction. It may be an idea or even a scripture or an overwhelming sense of peace. And then throughout the day, keep listening and being sensitive to His Spirit because He will direct your thoughts to align with His own. Now what He gives you may be sudden. It may also be a process, like gradually fitting the pieces of a puzzle together. As long as you remain attentive and expectant, He will speak to you through so many different ways. You'll begin to hear His wisdom in conversations with people or literature that you read, teachings that you hear. And while you take it all in, you're going to find how He fills you with an inner strength and power that you need to take on the task ahead. So don't try and navigate through any task alone. Remember the first step to commit is to commit it to the Lord in prayer. And in the exchange, He gives you all you need to have it established and successful. And when we take that step of obedience to whatever He tells us to do, just like Psalm 97 verse 11 says, an irrepressible joy will flood your hearts because you're assured of His favor and His protection 
as long as you follow his lead. I really hope that this has encouraged you. Remember the first step to victory after knowing exactly what God's will is for you, which is in his word. It is healing. It is success. It is financial freedom. It is seeing loved ones saved. So whatever that mountain is, God has a promise attached to that mountain. Well, the other side of that mountain. It is a sure thing. It is a sure victory for you that you know that is the outcome you're believing for. But to take that first step to go forward towards that wonderful outcome, which is his promise for you, would be to commit everything to the Lord first. Roll your works, roll that task, roll that journey of faith over to him and believe that as you approach him in that time of giving it over to him, you can have an absolute confidence that an exchange will take place as you hand over everything, your motives, your agenda, your thoughts, your will, as you surrender it to him, he does the exchange and gives you his own perspective. He gives you his own thoughts. He gives you his own heart and power and joy and peace to walk in exactly what he has for you. And the more attentive you stay towards him, listening to what his instruction is, he will give it to you without fault finding. He gives you that daily wisdom. He gives you the light one step at a time to walk in exactly what you need to walk in for that day on the right path to the outcome that you're believing for. That is your first step to victory. Roll those works onto him and watch an exchange take place where his words or his thoughts, his perspective becomes your own. And that's the direction you stay in. Until next week, God bless you and goodbye.